G'day viewers. In this segment I'll give an overview of the link layer to remind you where we are in the course. Okay, so here's our layered protocol stack and if you recall we've already done the physical layer, we've talked about that. Now what I'm going to do is finish off the link layer which builds on top of the physical layer to be able to send frames, individual units of information, across a link between computers. Now we've already covered some of the uh, different techniques and problems and solutions that you find in the link layer. In particular I've already talked about framing which is the ability to delimit the start and end of messages so we can send complete units of information called frames across a link and we've also talked about error detection and correction which allow us to handle some kinds of errors as information is sent across links. When you put these topics together we've actually seen quite a lot of the link layer. For instance, they allow us to construct um, a DSL link. That's something that many of you might be using right now to access the internet from home. And we can understand the techniques which make a DSL link work. What we're going to do now is go beyond that and cover these three topics to round out the link layer. These are actually three pretty exciting topics. The first topic is that of retransmissions, which allows us to handle links where loss is quite common. This is the case for many kinds of wireless links, such as 802.11. Without a mechanism such as retransmission, many frames would be lost across the, as they're sent across the link, and the network as a whole would become inefficient. So we're going to want to retransmit information to get it safely across that link. The second topic we'll cover in this unit is multiple access. In the links we've looked at so far, there are two ends, and one end just sends frames and they arrive at the other end. But sometimes you can have multiple parties, all of whom want to access the one link. Just think of an 802.11 network where many different clients, maybe more than two, maybe ten, want to talk to the same EP. That's a, that's a, you know, a single wireless link, and we need some multiple access scheme to coordinate the way in which these different users will use the link. We'll talk about classic Ethernet schemes, and also 802.11 will appear again. And in the third topic, to round out the link layer, I'll talk about something called switching. Switching allows us to use boxes called switches, unsurprisingly, to combine individual links together into something that really looks like a much larger happy link that connects a host to all of the other hosts on the switch network. Um, it's used to build something called modern Ethernet. Actually, by the time we've seen all of these units, we'll know quite a lot about how to build networks. For instance, we'll know a lot about how 802.11 networks work, um, and we'll also know a lot about how modern e switched ethernets work. These are the garden variety wide networks that you find if you go to any enterprise or campus and so forth and ask to look at the network. Okay, so let's get on with it.